Thanks, Dion. Good afternoon, everybody. I thought in light of the uh, uh, events that have taken place over the last couple of days that uh, I ought to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. So let's get right into it and uh, get started. Bruce Beck, NBC. John, you made two big changes this week, changes again. Why should Giants fans believe you will get it right this time? Well, I haven't given them any reason to believe that, uh, Bruce. It's up to me um, to make the right choices, up to Steve and I to make the right choices going forward to earn back their trust. And that is not going to be an overnight process. That's going to take, uh, that's going to take some time. But it starts with getting uh, the general manager pick uh, done uh, correctly and then with hiring the right head coach. So that's going to be a process that we're going to have to, we're going to, have to earn their trust again. And, uh, as I said, that's not going to happen overnight. I'm Rob, Newsday. John, how much do you look at these interviews for general managers and head coaches as, as package deals, as, as bringing one guy in with, with his coach? Uh, there are no package deals. I mean, each, uh, I, I, we want to get the general manager ideally done first. And obviously, we'll talk about um, the candidates uh, for a head coach, but uh, there's, it's not going to be a package deal. I want to go through a uh, a, a complete process here, interview as many people as possible. I don't want to rush into anything. We've made that mistake in, in the past, and I want to make sure we get to see as many candidates uh, as possible, ideally. Art Stapleton, the record. John, do you feel like you guys have made bad choices and you've identified wrong candidates, or in some ways is this a failure of your process that you've gone through? It's probably, um, probably all of the above, Art. I mean, uh, we haven't necessarily made the right choices. Um, I think um, looking back on our process, I wish it had been a little more extensive, that we had seen more people um, and uh, maybe taken our time a little bit more with it. And uh, we're going to try not to make that mistake this time. Paul Schwartz, New York Post. Hey, John. Um, um, what is your confidence level in your ability to make the right choice? Um, you know, a lot of these choices the last few years have not been um, proven to be successful. So, um, you know, you, you know, everything starts and stops with you. You know, do you feel you're capable of making the right choice this time around? I, I do, Paul. And obviously, I don't expect a lot of people to believe that, given what's happened over the last few years, and I'm going to have to earn uh, their trust again. But I, I feel very good about the group of candidates for the general manager position that we have scheduled right now. Um, I think any one of a number of them could would make an excellent general manager. So I, I am confident that that we have the resources to make the right choice here. Bob Blaber, Newsday. John, I'm just curious your reaction to um, being in your building uh, watching the Cowboys game where a lot of Cowboys fans showed up and then against Washington, not a lot of fans showed up, period. How much did that impact you? And as a, as a kind of a corollary, you said, you, you know, you, you rushed it a little bit last time. Do you think that there was a little bit of comfort in that it had been so long since there was a succession of front office stability since, since 1979? Okay, that's the way to get two questions in there, Bob, in violation yes, of the it rules, is. but okay. Um, obviously, you don't like to see visiting team fans in, in your building, but that's just the way the NFL is. Right now, we had a lot of fans in Miami, a lot of fans in Tampa. Now, certainly it's exacerbated by the fact that we had a poor record this year, but it, certainly it's not a pleasant sight that you, that you want to see every time. And, and, and yes, we've gone through this process far too often in recent years after having a lot of years of stability, and it's not a fun process uh, at all. Um, there is nothing more painful to me uh, than making that long walk down the hallway uh, to tell somebody uh, particularly a, a, a good person uh, like Joe, um, that uh, we're making a change. It's gut-wrenching for me. Um, it's been gut-wrenching every time I've had to do it. And um, obviously, I've had to do it far too often uh, lately. lately. And, and that's why we're, um, that's why we're in this uh, process again. And um, we're going to get it right this time. Thank you, Jones, NFL Network. Hey, John, I'm curious if there was a last straw for Joe Judge and where, if anywhere, does that 11-minute address where, as you well know, you know, he took some 
you know, veiled shots at, at your former coach and, and also a, a, a division opponent, obviously. I mean, obviously I wasn't thrilled with that uh, particular press conference, but I can't say there was one specific uh, act that was the last straw. It was just the culmination of things. Um, uh, we, we just got to a point where I, I, where I thought we had dug ourselves a hole so deep that I didn't see a clear path to getting out of it unless we completely blew it up and, and started all over again with a new general manager and a new head coach. Um, I still think that there is a really good head coach inside of Joe Judge. I just felt like given where we are right now uh, on the verge of bringing in a new general manager, we have to give that person um, the flexibility uh, to bring in the head coach that, uh, that, that he wants. And I, I think that's, that was a large part of the decision here in, in, making a, in making a change. I just felt like we really needed to just start from the, from, from the ground up again. Thank you. I'm Kevin, AP. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, Tom, how are you? Good. It, it seemed when you hired Joe, he came in and gave you a you know presentation which wowed you. I mean, in 2020 hindsight, do you need to uh, take a step back after you listen to these guys and look at more closely what they're saying? Well, I think that's a fair comment, but we did here. We did a lot of research on him, as we do with all of our candidates. Um, you know, he did he did do an excellent job in that interview. Um, sometimes, you know, some people interview well, some people don't, but you have to do more research than that. But I, I thought our process at that time was, was pretty thorough. I mean, you know, we had spoken to a number of people about Joe. And listen, I still believe that there is a good head coach inside it him um, but uh, I just felt like given where we are at the at the moment and certainly certainly that is not all due to, to, to him uh, but given where we are right now I felt like we needed a clean sweep thank you Ian O'Connor you are close hey John for, for those of us old enough to remember the the back-to-back -back quarterback sneak sort of brought back the memories of the bizarre chick fumble and in that period of time which obviously is not a pleasant memory for you but did that sequence really make this situation, as far as bringing him back, completely untenable? How much did that play into it? Uh, you know, obviously those weren't my favorite play calls in the world. I wish we had run that back when Pisarczyk uh, was here. But, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, Ian, that, that, was, that was just one minor factor in the overall scheme of things. Obviously not what I was looking for uh, watching the game, but, you know, you can point to any number of play calls that uh, – that, uh, that any of us uh, could have second guessed, but uh, it was a bit of a surprise to me, let's put it that way. Hey, Doug, the athletic. Hey, John, you know, as a reference, you fired a lot of people over the last couple of years. Um, but what do you say to the fact that your brother is still senior vice president of player personnel, your nephew's co director of player personnel, and there's a perception that there isn't really accountability for family members who have had prominent roles during this stretch? Well, that perception. Uh, has been created by you and others. And the reality is that um, in terms of my brother, my brother spends most of his time doing evaluation of college players. His grades go into our system and he participates in the draft. Um, all personnel decisions in this building, and this has always been the case, have been made by the general manager and the head coach. When they agree on a personnel decision, they come to me with it. And as long as they're both in agreement, I okay it. The only times I, I would possibly not do that is if there was an off-the-field conduct issue. So uh, Chris is a very skilled evaluator, but he does not have any authority here other than the fact that I will go to him on occasion and ask him about players. Tim is probably the most respected guy we have in this building. Coaches, uh, front office staff, uh, the general manager, go to him, ask his advice on players because he is a good evaluator. He's worked his way up from the bottom, and he's earned his stripes. He does not have any authority here. The personnel decisions have always been made and will always be made by the general manager and the head coach. If they agree on, on a draft pick, on a UFA, uh, then I'm going to okay it 99.99% of the time. Uh, the only time I will raise an issue about it is if there is a conduct issue. I'll question them about it. I'll make them defend their positions, and I'll make sure that they're on the same page. But at the end of the day, if they're in agreement, then that's the decision we're going with. 
I am Dudley, New York Post. Hey, John, sorry, my camera's not working. Um, <laughs> but, I'm, uh, I'm quite all right with that, Ryan, but go ahead. <laughs> John, uh, how, you've done one interview. You have all these other ones you've lined up. How desirable is the Giants GM job when there's no cap space, the offensive line needs work, the, deep, the pass rush needs work? What is the feedback you've gotten? Is this, do you feel like your job is desirable, especially quarterback? I didn't even mention quarterback, John. Uh, the quarterback situation is not uh, solidified. How, how desirable is the job you feel? Well, Ryan, all I can tell you is based on the number of uh, inquiries that I've had from prospective candidates, um, we're not gonna be able to interview even 20% of all of them. This is a very desirable job. We happen to have a lot of draft capital uh, coming up. I, I think this is an organization that people want to work for. Um, so I've been heartened by the fact that um, so many people have expressed an interest and including people who are uh, very talented and who have a legitimate shot at getting the job. Um, we haven't been turned down by anybody yet. Jordan Rock, ESPN. Hey, John. If I could just follow up on the, your answer before about Chris and Tim and everyone. Uh, and also then ask you, you know, how you guys came up with the list of GM candidates. But I'm, I'm curious, do you think that them being part of ownership doesn't, though, hold maybe more, more sway than if it was somebody else? More sway in terms of what? In regards to, you know, when they make a recommendation on a player, you, like I know it just goes into the system like everyone else, but it's a, they're not anybody else. They're actually part of ownership. I, I do not think it holds any more sway. It, it, that has not been my experience here. I, I, list, I listen to them, uh, but there are, there are many voices in this building, but the only two voices at the end of the day uh, that matter are the head coach and the general manager. They make the final determination. They listen to them because they recognize their evaluation skills, but there are other people in the building who have evaluation skills as well and who have voices as well, but they do not have undue influence on the final decisions that are made here. They absolutely do not. And also, how, how did you come up with the list for GM candidates and, and who's involved in that process? I mean, that's something that I, I, I've said this before. I'm always conscious of uh, personnel around the league. It's, I, I always keep a list um, of possible head coaches, possible uh, general managers. I look at it, I look at the successful teams. Uh, at, at what they're doing. I have a lot of people around the league that I, that I talk to whose opinions uh, that I respect. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, Steve and I put together the list. Steve Politti, NJ.com. Hey, John, curious, is this your lowest moment in your associated station with the Giants? I mean, is this, is this as embarrassed as you've been about the franchise? Honestly, I would have to say yes. Yes, it is. Um, I kept thinking during the season that uh, we had hit rock bottom, and then each week it got a little worse. So, uh, honestly, I, I'm not proud of saying this, but if I'm going to be 100% honest, I would have to say the answer is yes. Pat Leonard, Daily News. Hey, John, how are you doing? Hey, Pat. Um, you, you say Chris doesn't have any authority, but he was, only, he was one of only three people along with yourself and Steve interviewing your first GM candidate and my question is about uh, you know do you think you Chris and other family members need to take a step back from the football operations and dramatically change the way you operate on a daily basis in order to see this fixed? well what we need to do is to hire the right general manager to oversee the football operations and that's what this process is about I mean you make it sound like uh, we're having um, undue influence on the football operations here. I've, I've said this repeatedly for, for whatever reason um, you guys keep asking me about it. It's the general manager and the head coach uh, that are mo most important people in this building in terms of making personnel decisions. Chris is in those interviews because he's part of ownership and I value his opinion. Uh, I, value, I value his, uh, his skills and, and I want him in there. At the end of the day, um, I'll listen to him, but it'll be Steve Tish and myself who make the final decision. We'll take two more, Zach Rosenblatt, Ralph Vacchiano, Zach Rosenblatt. 
Uh, John, uh, in the past, you've admitted that you know there were some mistakes made in the 2018 and 2019 off seasons. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you regret bringing Dave back these last two years and, and why you felt it was the right decision to let him uh, close out the season as a result well, of getting a head start on things. Well, I, listen, I thought that at the end of last season, you know, we finished five and three. I thought that the arrow was pointing up. I thought we were moving the right direction. Uh, I thought the, the communication, um, uh, you, you know, at that end of the building was good. And for whatever reason, things went uh, haywire this year. Everybody got hurt uh, between training camp and the early part of the season, and things just went downhill uh, from there. And it, we reached a point where I just think we need to, to, uh, to, to hit the reset button and, um, and get a fresh start, and that's why we made the decision that we did. Ralph Vacchiano, SM1. Hey, John. Um, you said in the past that stability is always a goal for you and your franchise, which obviously hasn't been the case over the last few years. I'm wondering if you think that that will be a concern among the candidates for Coach and GM about just how much you really are willing to commit to their plan, and also if you feel like you need to force yourself to be a little bit more patient this time around and maybe endure the, the down parts a little bit better. I, I certainly think, Ralph, that it, it will be a factor that, that – um, some of these candidates uh, will consider. Um, and that's something that we're going to have to overcome in these interviews. In terms of forcing myself, you know, I wanted to do that very badly this year, but uh, I just didn't see any end in sight. I just thought that we had reached a point where um, I didn't see a clear path uh, to, to, to making significant progress and just thought, as I said before, that we needed to hit the reset button. Last one here. John, will the, will the new general manager have full authority to hire whichever head coach he wants without any say from you? And will he have full authority to do whatever he wants with Daniel Jones without any say from you? He, he, will, lead the, the general, the, he will lead the search for a head coach, but those decisions always are subject to final approval by ownership. Um, you know, in terms of, of Daniel or Saquon or anyone else you want to ask me, that's going to be, be between the general manager and the head coach. If I could quickly follow up to Zach's question that kind of flew under the radar, why did you let Dave Gettleman retire instead of firing him later in the season to get a head start on the GM search? Well, it would not necessarily have given me a head start. The only people I would have been allowed to speak to would be people who are on the street right now. And... You know, quite frankly, my, our top candidates are people that, who are all employed right now. So it really would not have given us any advantage. And um, I didn't see any, any need to do that uh, earlier than, than when he announced his retirement.